Would you agree that kickback is one of the reasons people fear the table saw the most? I tend to think that is one of the main reasons, is that they are scared of it. Let's figure out a way to prevent it then. Can you, because we, can we react to it? We cannot react to it. All we can do is basically try and eliminate it. So we've got to get over that fear and get to a point of, what would you call it, respect? Got to respect the tools. I mean, every, like you said, everything is dangerous. Where, where does it start? Uh, with well, basically knowing what, how the kickback happens. So what caused me to get that kickback then? But, I mean, I know. Let's let them know. Let's show them. If you noticed, there's stuff missing here that should be here. This is the big one right there. Our students will never use a table saw without a guard. Okay, that is mandatory. Okay, the other thing that is missing, this is what's called a splitter or the new version, the curved one's called a riving knife. It actually shapes like the blade. This works like, what do you say, the median on the interstate? Very similar to that. It's not going to prevent an accident, but it's going to make the accident stay under control and be less serious. Okay. So, what were the other mistakes I was making? Let's see, you said you're standing on the wrong side. I was over there. Didn't have the riding knife in. Pushing the board from the wrong place. You were actually really close to the fence here, creating a pivot point. Well, I couldn't use my left hand. That would have helped, wouldn't it? Let, let's put this back. Let's try to redo the, the uh, kickback. So, why don't you step out of the way just in case it happens again? Or do you want to do this one? No, go ahead. Okay. You so, this. yeah. So we got... Let's actually grab our little projectile here. Show them the back side of it. Yeah. So this is why, guys, you don't want to save your piece. Because what happens on a lot of kickback problems is they try to hold that piece and they grasp it really tight and then where does their hand go? You're going to ruin your workpiece anyways. This this is what, $10 if it was real, like cherry or something like that? Not even worth it. So let go. If it happens, there's no stopping it. Let go if it happens. So I'm still making three out of the same four mistakes. You'll see the point of, of doing this again after I go ahead and do it. Okay. Wrong place, one hand, no guard, only the splitter. I still had it. I mean, that was way for it to stop. That's a lousy cut. It's okay though. It's kind of like a rear ender on the interstate rather than a multi car pileup, right? The kickback happens when that board gets to the back of the blade and it lifts it up and grabs on top of that blade. That riving knife won't let it happen. When that blade's moving at 100 miles an hour or even faster, I hope you're out of the way when it happens. <laughs> yeah. Stance is one of the most important things on preventing kickback on the table saw. So only second to hand placement. I think they're probably equal. So we're gonna go over each one. Well, let's start with the stance. Okay. To keep kickback from happening, you've gotta keep the board against the fence. Okay. So a lot of people, if I stand right here, I'm right in the danger zone. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Right. So a lot of people like to stand right where you're at. Oh, awesome. So I want you to pretend cut here Keep the board against the fence okay. and push forward at the same side, same time. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay, that's really awkward. You were safe. Yeah. But kind of awkward. Yeah, I was very awkward. I felt like I didn't really have a lot of control over. So it. let's. So again, we don't want to stand right in line with it. So where's the other place you think you might be able to stand? So would I just go ahead and stand on the other side of the blade? There you go. Now, now let's do the same practice again. You can move a little closer. Pretend the blade's this line. Okay. So. That feels a lot better. Okay. The only thing 
that is equal importance with stance is where your hands were. And if you just recall, if we pretended this track was the blade, you had definitely had your hands in the wrong place. But yeah. we were focused on the stance. You got the stance down. Where your hands were on top is not the safest place because boards have sawdust on them. So what, what did I always tell you to do, Coach, when you were pushing a board through? Thumb behind here. And I always stand up here. This hand does not ever move. It just keeps it up there nice and tight against the fence. So from that quick demo, mm -hmm. a little trivia again. There's a little test. This is not trivia. This is a test. There's three directions we need you to push. So you need to push down. Down is one. Forward two. and to the side. Nailed it. Yes. Or yeah. cut it. Uh. <laughs> so. Your right hand is going to be doing the forward pushing for sure. Your left hand, definitely the sideways pushing. We try to encourage both hands, if possible, to do the downward. A coach uses his right hand to hold down. That's totally fine. I like to put knuckles on the table and put my thumb over the top. It's just a little bit of extra pressure, just reassurance. Okay? So let's demonstrate stance and hand place and see if we can get this all into one here. No, we're not running. Saw's off. All right. And we're not really cutting here. So, so here and then. Now think about oh, stance. And there then you over go. Here. It's a little bit awkward, but not quite as so, awkward as before. Knuckles on the table and this hand never moves, right? Yeah. This hand can be wherever you feel comfortable. Like I said, I've had kids put their palms, whatever's comfortable for you with that left hand. There you go. Now, how far do you think you want to push it? Um, you should push it until the board's all the way through the saw. Right? Okay, there you go. Keep going. Pass, pass the pass splitter. It. Awesome. Unfortunately, we had a student a few years ago that forgot about that, and the front half of the blade's going down, but the back half of the blade's coming up. And as soon as you cross that center line right here, the board becomes two pieces. He let go of the board. The back half was lifting up. It shot back, and... To add insult to, or misery to insult, or injury to insult, whatever the phrase I'm looking for here is, he was standing directly in line with the blade. So he got a midsection shot real hard, real fast. And he had to sit down, let's put it that way. That's one of those you'll only do once. <laughs> exactly. So, just to quickly go through it for you to review, we're gonna lock our fence. I'm gonna do this as a dry cut. Blade height. We've already set from before, so we don't have to review that one. So we'll put our guard down. Okay. My body stance is diagonal to the fence. I don't want to be flat-footed because if, if it starts to twist, mm -hmm. you can see how, you know, we, we always say, even though it's shop, it's still an athletic stand stance. So your left hand, whatever's comfortable, okay. your right hand in the center of the board. In the center of the board. Okay. The reason we don't want to go, watch what happens if I push over here. Oh, See how it comes away yeah. from the fence? But if I push here in the center, it it, it's, it's so, plus you have the left hand to back it up. So mm -hmm. there, there's your, and then follow through, and then reach down, or you can tap it with your knee, whatever's more convenient. All right, now that I've reviewed it, do you think you're ready? I guess so. Do you think I'm gonna need this? Well, we're gonna make a nine inch cut. So from the rules, a little, little quiz, do you need it at nine inches? No, it's six and under, right? Six and under, we grab it. So go ahead and let's check our blade height. Go ahead and do that. So right. we flip the so guard up. Put this up. Still good. good. To go? Awesome. And students are going to find that common because most projects we use similar lumber. So let's go ahead and re right. retract put the blade guard. Down. Okay, go ahead and set the fence to nine. All right, so we'll bring it over. The red line's on nine. Okay, okay so then. My stance, I want to be angled, and then we'll flip this. Thumb over the edge, there you Thumb go. Thumb over the edge. Left hand up here. Here. Uh, I will have my hand up here, but that's just, just in case. All right. It is okay to slide forward with the feet. So far, so good. Everything's going real well. I did this off camera and you did it real well. I reminded you off camera. Why didn't you lift up your left hand? 
Oh, because you need to stabilize yourself. So then that way, if you lose your footing, then you're not going to fall into the table saw. Yeah, we went over that one off camera, so that was a good, <clears throat> good unexpected uh, quiz there. Awesome job. Well, there are a couple extra videos on how to cross cut with a table saw and one that involves kickback and how the saw stop works. And if you're in one of my woodworking classes or, or the other instructors, you probably are assigned to watch them anyways. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell thing so you know when we post more videos. Thanks for watching. Go make some sawdust.